Hello and welcome. I'm Fernando, a GP in the UK. Today we will go through the new NICE guideline on diagnosing, monitoring and managing chronic asthma, focusing on what is relevant in primary care only. Given how extensive the guidance is, in this episode we'll just focus on initial assessment and diagnosis. In the next three episodes we will cover treating asthma in patients aged 12 and over, treating asthma in children aged 5 to 11 and those under 5, and finally asthma monitoring, general treatment principles and management in special groups. So stay tuned for those. Right, let's jump into it. The new guideline is a joint initiative developed by NICE, the British Thoracic Society, or BTS, and the Scottish Intercollegiate Guidelines Network, or SIGN. It replaces previous guidance, and you'll find a link to it in the episode description. As the initial assessment, we will get the history, checking for symptoms such as wheezing, a cough, shortness of breath, chest tightness, and any triggers that make symptoms worse as well as a personal or family history of asthma or allergic rhinitis. And we will consider alternative diagnoses depending on the symptoms and presentation. There are tables produced in the BTS SIME guideline on alternative diagnoses in WISI children and adults that you can have a look at and I have put a link to them in the episode description. We will then do a physical examination to check for expiratory polyphonic wheeze and signs of other possible causes, being aware that asthma can present with a normal examination. However, we will not confirm the diagnosis of asthma without a suggestive clinical history and a supporting objective test. What should our approach be if there are acute symptoms of presentation? Well, we will start treatment straight away if they are acutely unwell or highly symptomatic and perform objective tests to confirm a diagnosis of asthma if equipment is available. However, if objective tests for asthma cannot be done immediately, we will carry them out when acute symptoms have been controlled. Even though we need to be aware that the results of spirometry and fractional exhaled nitric oxide or phenol tests may be affected with inhaled corticosteroids, as the test results are more likely to be normal. So let's look at the objective diagnostic tests that we will need to organise. But before we need to know that from a diagnosis perspective, there are three groups of patients, those aged over 16, those aged 5 to 16 and those aged under 5. NICE has produced summaries of objective tests in the various age groups and a link to them can be found in the episode description. Let's start with patients over the age of 16. For them, as the initial tests, we will measure the blood eosinophil count or fractional exhaled nitric oxide or phenol level. We will then diagnose asthma if the eosinophil count is above the reference range or the phenol test is 50 parts per billion or more. If asthma is not confirmed by eosinophil count or phenol level, we will then measure bronchodilator reversibility with spirometry and we will diagnose asthma if the FEV1 increase is 12% or more and 200 ml or more from the pre-bronchodilator measurement. Or also, and this is new, if the FEV1 increases 10% or more of the predicted normal FEV1. Let's look at this in a bit more detail. NICE has argued that the change in FEV1 is best given as the percentage change compared with not the person's baseline, but the person's predicted FEV1. Using this calculation, a change of 10% or more is abnormal and therefore diagnostic. If we use the more traditional way as a percentage from the baseline FEV1, then a positive reversibility should be slightly higher, 12% or more, for both adults and children. In adults, the change should also be 200 ml or more. So NICE decided to include both ways of measuring reversibility in their recommendations, that is, 10% or more of predicted or 12% or more from baseline. If spirometry is not available or it is delayed, we will measure peak flow twice daily for two weeks and we will diagnose asthma if peak flow variability 
expressed as amplitude percentage mean is 20% or more. This is calculated by subtracting the lowest value measured each day from the highest value on the same day and averaging this over the number of days on which peak flow is measured. If asthma is not confirmed by a sinophil count, phenol level, bronchodilator reversibility or peak flow variability, but is still suspected on clinical grounds, we will refer for consideration of a bronchial challenge test. Then asthma will be diagnosed if bronchial hyperresponsiveness is present. And let's remember that bronchial hyperresponsiveness is a measure of how easily bronchospasm can be induced in the airways. Let's now look at the second group of patients, those aged 5 to 16. In this age group, as an initial test, we will measure the phenol level and diagnose asthma if the phenol level is 35 parts per billion or more. This is a change in practice because before, in the old guideline, phenol testing was not recommended as an initial test in this age group. Also, please note that we will not use the eosinophil count as an initial test, although it can play a part at a later stage, but we will come to that a little later. So, if the phenol level is not raised or phenol testing is not available, we will measure bronchodilator reversibility with spirometry and diagnose asthma if the FED1 increase is 10% or more of the predicted normal or 12% or more from baseline FED1. Please note that it does not need to be more than 200 ml in this age group. If spirometry is not available or it is delayed, we will measure peak flow twice daily for two weeks and diagnose asthma if peak flow variability, expressed as amplitude percentage mean, is 20% or more, that is, exactly the same as for adults. If asthma is not confirmed by pheno testing, bronchodilator reversibility or peak flow variability, but still suspected on clinical grounds, we will either perform skin prick testing to house dust mite or measure total IgE level and blood eosinophil count. We will then diagnose asthma if there is evidence of sensitization or if there is a raised total IgE level and the eosinophil count is more than 0.5. If there is still doubt about the diagnosis, we will refer to a pediatrician for a second opinion which will include consideration of a bronchial challenge test. What about diagnosing asthma in children under 5? Diagnosis in children under 5 is hard because it is difficult to do the tests and there are no good reference standards. So, for children under 5 with suspected asthma, we should treat with inhaled corticosteroids in line with NICE recommendations and review them on a regular basis. If they still have symptoms when they reach 5 years, we will attempt objective tests. If a child is unable to perform objective tests when they are 5, we will try doing the tests again every 6 to 12 months until satisfactory results are obtained. Or we will refer for specialist assessment if the symptoms are not responding to treatment. On a separate basis, we will refer to a specialist respiratory pediatrician any preschool child with an admission to hospital or two or more admissions to an emergency department with WIS in a 12-month period. Before ending this episode, let's touch on the subject of diagnosing occupational asthma. And for this, in adult onset asthma, poorly controlled established asthma, or reappearance of childhood asthma, we should check for a possible occupational component by asking the following questions. Are symptoms the same, better or worse, on days away from work? And are symptoms the same, better or worse, when on holiday, or time away from work, or longer than usual breaks, at weekends, or between shifts? If the answer is yes to any of those questions, we will suspect occupational asthma and we will refer them to a specialist. So that is it, a review of the initial assessment and diagnosis of asthma. We have come to the end of this episode. Remember that this is not medical advice, but only my summary and my interpretation of the guidelines. You must always use your clinical judgment. Thank you for watching and goodbye.